So in this video I'm going to show you how to put together this uh, little Christmas flamingo card. Uh, flamingo Christmas uh, box card, I believe you call it. And it flattens to fit into an envelope which is included with the file. Um, this is the print and cut version, a little test version. So everything was done um, on a Cricut to print and cut. Um, there's a couple of minor changes that I'm making, but um, basically that's what it is. It'll flatten to go into envelope and then um, it'll stand up to display. So um, these are all the things I'm going to use with it. So I'm just going to put that aside. We're going to use those for the uh, ornaments. They're like little they're like little uh, enamel dots that I get from Doodlebug Design. So it's just a bunch of colors that I have. And then I'm going to use this for the eye instead of, uh, you can cut out an eye for the flamingo, but um, this is just a flatter enamel dot that I have uh, from Eyelet Outlet. So I'm going to put those aside. And what I like to do when I do my box cards is that I want to uh, put together the pieces, like any of the pieces that actually need to be pieced together prior to putting them on the card, if I can. It's not always possible, but if I can, I do that. So I want to show you the pieces of the card. There's this long piece that I say card in there that um, will be the front of the card. And the same color is the back. Now normally I wouldn't emboss it, but I'm not going to recut it out. Um, but I'll show you how it goes together when we assemble it. So we're going to put those pieces aside. And then we have the palm tree insert. And I did it in brown because um, that's the main component. And it's when you have brown around the edges, it's actually going to get it, if for some reason you put the green part on, like offset a bit, bit it'll still kind of give it a little nice edge. So that's the reason why I made that brown. And um, here are the pieces that go to that. Let's put that aside right there. This is the pan inside panel for the back piece, so we're going to put that in there. And then this is the how the front's going to layer. So we're going to actually put that together. Here's the top of the tree. And I'll explain why we have extras here, because there's like a little extra piece that's not as long. It's really just, we have some supports in here. And then here we have um, just extra support because of the legs and the flamingo. And this is the back panel for a little sentiment, if you want to write on it, um, to personalize it. So I'm going to just put that aside as well. And then these will go with this. So I'll show you that in just a moment. We'll just start with the tree. And this is the envelope. So we're just going to put that envelope aside and I'll show you. It's just sized to fit the card sideways. Um, so you can make your own card to fit that. So we're going to put that aside. Okay, now we have all the things we're going to piece. So we're going to, we'll start with the tree, the tree insert. So you could do this on just this piece. So let's just do that. We'll just do this, put that aside. I'm going to get my little fine tip applicator, which I'm using art glitter glue in. I just need to see how this is going to fit. Like that. So we're going to take this piece, this piece, and then um, I forgot all these little pieces. So there's a bunch of little pieces too. So it happens. I, I use my little embellishment bowl to hold them. So we're going to put these in there. There's the signs in here. The hat. So let's take that hat and the pieces, the other pieces for the flamingo out. So you can see I also have the sign out and um, these are the little pieces for the coconuts we're going to put on. And that just inked them a little bit with this color box shock ink. So just around the edges of this. So we're going to do the tree first. So we're just going to layer those. We're going to put the sign aside. And I'll explain more about the sign when we get to it. 
let's get to this. Oh, I also want to ink the edges of this too before we know. So it just gives it a little bit more interest. You could use something like um, uh, Distress Ox Oxide inks or, um, or I should say Distressed inks or Oxide inks if that's something you have. Sometimes I like to do a quick inking on the edges and um, this is my go-to for that without getting all my applicators out. Um, I use black and, uh, well it's really charcoal, but I use this color which is, uh, let's see, chestnut, roan, and black the most. So those are my two um, go-tos to uh, do a little quick inking around a cut piece. The only thing is sometimes that they kind of, uh, pieces of them fall off once it gets old. So now that we've got this, let's go ahead and put this on. And you could put it on, I'm just going to put the glue down here. I'm just going to put the glue down here and just lightly, I don't want it to leak around the edges so I'm just going to go around here. going to go ahead and just match it up. I always put it on lightly um, if I can just to match up the edges, especially when you have a bunch of edges that kind of not ultra critical, but this is why I like the brown background because with the green, if you do have a little brown showing, it actually will give it a little bit more character. At least that's my opinion. I'm sticking to it. So this, you can do it any way you want. They're, they're all shaped the same. They're just layered. So we're just going to layer them on top of each other so it looks like a trio of coconuts. should be able to see it. So I'm just reaching around the edges to make sure it's lined up. And it's not, um, I mean, that one doesn't lined up at all. So, for whatever reason, that one didn't line up very well. I'm going to get that third one. I'm getting used to this um, fine tip applicator. It has a little thing that goes on the top of it. So if you you see, instead of having a pin, which is the Darius that I typically use, I have a little dry glue on there. But this goes over like this. It still can clog, but I like the way that it covers. So um, I may recommend these. I've been using them for about a month now, but I was weary of recommending them until I got a little time under them. And longevity as I did like Darius, but I had some significant flaws with those little fine tip applicators. So, so now we have that. And what would be fun is if we just pop it up a little bit. So we're just gonna go get our little foam tape here. What I like about the Scotch foam tape is that I can just I could cut it or just tear a little piece, but I may have to cut it because I need it a little bit thinner. So I'm going to cut it. I don't want to waste it, so I'm going to just put the extra piece aside. And I made it a little bit too long. I think. Let's see. The moral of the story is maybe you should cut it. I don't know. Nothing's perfect. Not in my world, anyways. So I kind of have a weird thing of coconuts, but I'm just going to pop them on there. I could have done that last too. So now we're going to put it to the insert. So the insert's all ready to go to put in the card. So the back part, we want to put this little, we want it to look like sand. So we're going to line this up and put it in on here before we put the tree. Because it's going to be um, this, the tree, actually it's going to be this, this little support that we're going to put on the back of this tree, and then this on top. So 
I will show you that now. So again, just lining it up carefully. And that's why, again, the black, the brown insert works well with this card. And what I also want to note is um, this card could be used for something other than Christmas. That's the, the appeal of this card for, card for me, is that um, I didn't in, uh, attach the hat to the flamingo. So you could make this as a flamingo card any time of the year. So I like cards that you can use for multiple purposes. I do like Christmas cards, but... Um, I wouldn't like. So you could do this on the, you could attach this to the actual other piece or this piece. So we're lining it up and this is literally all this is for is extra support because it's pretty long. I do use American Crafts textured cardstock that's pretty heavy weight and I do that because it cuts so well and um, it's strong. So you can see that it's starting to strengthen it up by this third one. It really strengthens it. So, I'll get rid of my trash there. And so you could put the glue on the back of this. I mean, typically I put it on the thing I'm putting it on because I'm not, I have the dropsies. I like I drop a lot of things. And I tend to drop things and get glue all over. So, I'm taking my chance doing this, but um, all is good in the world. It will work out. Oops, it goes a little bit further down. When you put that insert, it really truly is only a insert to help you. It's a little bit longer. I wanted it to go down further. If it doesn't match exactly, nobody's going to see. And what's kind of cool is I didn't do it because I didn't have the right embossing folder, but you could emboss this trunk with like little lines or something, or you could just manually do it with a um, like a stylus tool. Actually, I might end up doing that on the fly. Just, just giving it a little bit of more texture, like a de-embossing per se. And I didn't line it up the best up there. So it does fit. It's just me. It's just my lack of lining it up. And we don't care about down here because the reason we don't care that it's offset a little bit on the bottom, we care about the top where you can see because we're going to cover it. We're just going to put that right on top. So for this one, I think again, a little foam tape might might do. I'm just going to get two little pieces here. That one's a little bit too big, but that's okay. Again, I could cut it, but I just, for some reason, I don't like gumming up my, um, my scissors all the time. And I don't have nails, so I chew my nails is a bad habit, but that's just the reality of my life. I'm going to put that aside again. You just place it what it looks like, how it looks good to you. I just wanted to cover anything excess down there so it looks like it's coming out of the sand. So that's that part, so I'm going to move on to a different piece. So I used this French blue, I had it on hand, I could have used a darker blue just to do a little inking on the edge and um, another purpose for inking for me is it just kind of enhances the pieces and uh, makes it a lo look a little bit more uh, 3D. So uh, I also did ink this with that the brown that I was using. So they, we do have, uh, so there's something that says warmest wishes, there's a little tag in there included with the file. And I used a little gel pen, I know it's kind of, you can kind of see the, I was going to um, try my foil quill but I actually found a 
pen. I just wanted it to kind of match with the colors with the wood tone. There's also a blank one if you want to add your own sentiment as well. And of course you can always resize it or make it longer, um, however you want to do it. But that goes on the signs, so and we're going to put together the sign. So first we'll put together, I'm going to put this aside as the empty sign. We'll put this together. So this just goes together the largest, and then the medium side and the small size goes on the bottom. So I used an embossing folder um, called Waves. Always, usually I try to put um, the what I use down. I mean, not all embossing folders are available anymore. But I like to put it down in the notes. So if you're wondering what I used, most times I put it there. But if I don't, you can always contact me. There's a little contact form on um, the website. You can ask me, say, hey, what'd you use? Because, I mean, I know uh, Cricut stopped uh, selling or manufacturing, actually, Cuddlebug. But this one, I believe, was a Sizzix. I don't have it right in front of me, but I'll have it in the notes. So that's ready for the front of the card when I get there. And this is the sign. So this is going to just, it's gonna, this, these three pieces are going to glue to the back here and this to the front once it's together. So there's going to be a little bit of a gap. I try to put like little lines to help guide you, but really it's not that bad. You can kind of line it up. So I'm going to put this upside down. And I'm putting this upside, so the texture upside down. So it's like having a little uh, support on the back, like a regular sign, but I made it a little thicker to make it easier to glue. So I just put a little bit in the middle. It says white about this, this piece right here. We're just gonna, I'm just making it a little bit, you see how close from the top I am? And just eyeballing the center. You're really not going to see this, um, but it, what's nice is that it gives you the little gap. So just make sure your texture facing the other side. So if you want the edge, the sides to look textured. So it's not like centered. Um, I get that. So that's what it's going to look like. So we're going to do the next one. I'm just going to put a little glue there. Just being careful where I put it. Carefully line it up. And you don't have to go all the way to the edge, like I said. Majority. You can go to the edge if you want. There'll just be less gap. I'm just making sure, just eyeballing it. Making sure that it they're about the same width, even though it looks like it's longer on the top. Like I said, it's not a big deal. This is supposed to be a rough sign anyway, so make it look rough. And then to put the center one, I'm just going to go across with a little line in the middle. And then as I place it, I'm going to make sure that there's, it looks like about the same space. Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect because it's meant to be a wooden sign. And then we'll go ahead and you can either add glue to this, just knowing that it might leak through on the other side because you have little gaps. You can do like a light, a light amount of glue, or you can do like a little foam tape to pop it up. Um, get my fingers out of the way. And you can see there's the finished sign. So that's all ready to go when we got the card together. So all the, the time consuming stuff is the piecing. I realize not everybody does this, so it's just better to show everybody. And I don't do a lot, lot of uh, live talking videos. I usually voice over, so this is new to me. Doing the best I can. I try to go a little bit faster if I can. But we're going to go ahead and put this little... We're just adding a little glue to this back piece, and we're going to add the support. And this will help because the legs are the only thing glued to the front. You could put something else behind it if you feel you need more more support but I want to get a little bit more support so it's, you just have to carefully line it up so we're getting a little beefiness so once we get the other layers on I'd be careful I have a little glue on my fingertips so I have my little wet, wet paper towel on the side here the glue and piecing do, do not go well when they're on your fingertips so and I have a little excess glue here so we got that taken care of. So we have the hat piece. 
So you can see that you don't have to put the hat on if you want to use this just a regular maybe birthday card or some other card for a flamingo lover. And then we're going to put this like this. Show you how it layers. Like that. And it goes like this. Like this. And here are the pieces. You can just stick it on there, but you can glue it however, whatever angle you want. And it'll be like this. So that's how it pieces together. So I'm not going to make you, uh, we have two more pieces, sorry. I'm not going to make you watch everything. But we do have a little eye, just to show you, and the, the beak piece. So it can get a little cumbersome. If you did want to print and cut, you could. There's a layered version in the extra step folder, and you can do that. So I'm going to go ahead and piece it, and I'll be right back. So here it is all put together, and again, I didn't use the little uh, dot that came with the, the eye that came with it. I used a little enamel dot from Eyelet Outlet, or if you have other embellishments, you could use uh, stickles. Um, I know there's all sorts of, they have enamel accents too. And again, um, I think I mentioned that you could use this card for other purposes, but I'm just going to glue this to the top like this for to make it Christmas, because that's what my intention was, but I wanted to make sure I had Christmas covered for all regions, so just adding a little glue, and it can be angled however you want. So if you don't want to add it, don't add it. So that's it. I think it's kind of a fun one, and you can make a big one too. Another idea is just, if you want a flamingo card, um, you could actually blow this up to fit on a card. So that's a nice thing about breaking apart designs too and using them for other purposes. So I'm going to put that aside. So now we're getting to the card part. So the same color, that's the back. Again, I accidentally embossed this, but we're not going to go. I'm not going to go cut another piece because this will go over this. Um, and this is the back, so we're going to put that aside. And here's the insert. So I only have one insert in this card. Put that aside. So we're not going to put this in in the back until we have the card together because we want this to hide the tabs in the back. So when you cut this, just the way it's cut, you'll want to attach it on this side because you'll see this side is larger so it won't attach. And I did that that way because um, that means I have texture on the back. And then inside I also have texture too because I have a panel. So um, this will actually look good on the back anyways, even uh, if you wanted to emboss it. So that's why I didn't change it. Because on the back, here's a little panel we'll put on. And um, I usually don't put that on. You can put that on first, but um, I don't put that on until uh, last usually. Because the, these are nice. The box cards flatten. So we're going to do that. So we're going to go ahead and... Make sure it's good and folded on the score lines. Get the like, nice crisp, crisp. If you use a bone folder, you can do that to fold them. Um, dash cut lines also give you a great fold. So we're going to go ahead and add glue to this left tap. We're going to line it up. So we're lining up this edge to the right to or to the left of the tab fold. So you want to make sure you put a good enough pressure. So this is, this is how it's going to close. So to make it uh, easier to put this in, we're going to do it when it's still open. So what I want you to do, I'll look at, I have my little thing here, so it happens that sticky stuff gets everywhere. Lots of the glue. We want it to line up to the bottom. So I have this flat. This tab right here is flat. And that's just help you align it to the bottom part. But we want this end of this tab. I've got to show you. I've got to angle it. We want it to be just to the left of that fold. So you could touch it, but um, your best bet is just to get to the left of it so it doesn't get into any interference. 
So we're going to do that first. So we're going to add glue to this tab. You see how I'm doing it. This is the side right here. And we're going to, and you can go slightly above the bottom so you can't see it, but it's going to give you additional support if you can line it up on the bottom. Because this is, this is not the biggest footprint of a card. So you see I'm a little bit away from it. You can get closer. i just doing it to, to demonstrate. And I'm just lining up that bottom edge. And again, that's just, what's going to help is this is going to hold the card up as well as the front and back and the sides. When they're tall like this, I want to make sure I have additional support. So if you know how to put inserts in after it's put together, you can go ahead and to your, you know, if that's what you want to do, go ahead and do it. I just uh, have started putting together this way to help make it easier for some that might struggle with it. So now you can see this is just flat like this. And what's interesting is when you just lay this flat, you can see it's all lined up. This is going to glue right where it needs to go. Okay? So we're just going to go ahead and add glue. So you can see this is what I did. Now it's flat and see it's folded over. That's where it's glued. Fold it over. And we're going to go ahead and I'm making sure that that bottom is lined up. And because I gave it the space on the other side, I should have space. You'll see the tab will be close to this fold line inside, but it won't be matching to it. It shouldn't be. Do you see how that is? Okay. So I'm just going to fold the other way just to give it a little bit more oomph. And then the last thing we need to do is glue this. So the easiest way to do it, you can't pull that all the way up because it's glued, but you can see I'm upside down now. We're just going to put that down and go like that. So it's a different way of putting an insert. If you're used to the old way of putting the frame together and putting the um, inserts in after that, uh, I'm getting used to this way. I think it's, for me, it's much easier, but do what's easy for you. So you can see it just matches and folds right down. I don't have any side panels. Um, I chose not to do that based on the design of the card. I thought about it, but that's why I just made them curvy. So, oops, we're out of, a little bit out of uh, focus there. So there you go. It's a little bit, it's a card. So we'll go ahead and add the rest and we're almost done. So other than the quick envelope here, the final, I know I have a little bit of a stained craft mat too, but it still works. So don't replace what doesn't work. Just because it's pleasing to your eye doesn't mean I'm not going to be a real crafter and actually use it to the extent, unfortunately. So I already added that back panel. Just centered it so you know I can add a little sentiment. Because everything, I actually don't keep most of my Christmas cards. I send them out. So I don't have those on hand. If I want it, another one, I'll just make them. So, um, but I do keep most of my boxes. Every once in a while I give away one. So now we had... Uh, layered this layer front piece. You could have put it on before. I'm just putting on on after. Just centering it. Not centering it. It should fit with the curves so I'm just kind of feeling around there. And then applying pressure. What's nice when you do this is that we're also making sure that, that the folds are good. It's folding well and it'll open well. So I didn't add it to you, but you could add like little embellishments like presents and stuff like that. Then we're going to go ahead and put these two on. So you could go all the way to the bottom if you want more structure or you can try to do a little bit up. It does hold up. I've tried it just with one layer of cardstock, but um, I don't like to uh, push things. so. So let's put this one in first. So this is the back one. See, so it's going to hide those tabs on the inside. Those tabs. We're just going to slide in. Now you can go from the bottom or top. There's a little clearance on the left and right to make it easier to slide in. So I think we're going to go from the bottom though. Because if you go from the top and you get glue on the top, then you just, it might be visible. So I'm just going to put a little 
bit of a line of glue glue around the edge here. And I'm just going to go through the bottom. So I'm just going to go right here. And then I'm kind of going to reach over, just line it up. Again, it should line up on the top there. Just fine and on the bottom. I only have clearance on the left and right to be able to get that panel in with a little bit of clearance. So that now you have a little bit of the alternate colors. You wonder what paper I use. It, you know, all this majority of this is, if not all, I think almost majority of this is uh, American Crafts texture and cardstock. I found the perfect pink. I had a grapefruit. They don't sell it in 12 by 12, but I found it in 8.5 by 11. So it just cuts so well. So I'm going to add a little bit of glue. I'm going to be really careful when I do this. You can see I'm just adding a little bit of glue, and I don't want to move it around a lot, so I really only have one chance with these little skinny legs. So I'm going to make a decision. You can put this there if you want to know how it's going to look. I'm going to go right. I'm trying to just make sure it doesn't go beyond the edge. I got a little bit of glue on there. So I want to get most of the legs on there for support. But I was trying to make sure that this little tip doesn't go too far over that because otherwise it won't fit in the envelope. And I really didn't want it. I wanted to make this um, a card that people could use for other purposes. So I didn't want to put the little, like a little support on the back. And then we're just going to go ahead and pop up the sign with a little foam tape. And the other thing I did, um, I changed is I had some ornaments uh, that would have to be pieced together. I decided that um, you could do whatever you wanted. You could use enamel dots. You could go and do another, if they're ornaments from another application that you utilize. So you can see it right there. there. So we're going to put some enamel dots to show as either lights or ornaments, really ornaments because they're round. So I have all my colors here. I'm not, I'm not that organized to cut them all out. But um, I'm going to come here and we'll do, I'll just start and then, so we have one, two, three, I kind of picked uh, light colors that signify more of a... One, two, three, four, five, six. There's seven, seven things, so I'm going to put them on seven. But I could put multiple ones too. So I'm just going to add a couple here and there, just to give it the look of having lights or ornaments. And then um, I'll be done with the card. So I'll be back shortly, so you can see what I added. So you can see I just added uh, just some fun colors. Um, I wasn't trying to be center them, it just some were kind of arbitrary where I placed it. I just wanted a little color that looked more like Christmas. Um, you could add anything you want. I decided that that would be something that people would probably want to make a decision on their own. Um, you could use whatever you have on hand to decorate that or other files. So now you can see that it opens up to to be able to display and then you can flatten it to put an envelope. So you can see this is a, this is the envelope. So that's the bottom, the largest piece, the top's the smallest piece. And it's going to sit sideways. I don't want to do it up and down. They can slide it out, but you can see that you have space. So we're going to go ahead and put together the envelope really quick. So the one thing I always say with the envelopes, I mean, it's up to you how you want to do this, but you could use a little pencil or something to mark where you need the glue. So I like to put these in side flaps down and then glue over it, so we fold it. So we're doing the bottom one, which is the larger flap. So the one thing you could do is mark where the, the top of this is, so that's one thing I do. So I can do that, and then I know I can do this, but it's just a matter of how far I go, and then just angle it a little bit. If you don't have enough, you can always reach in and add more. Let's put that down. So I have a little bit on the other one. It's just you just don't want to glue get glue on the inside. Since I may hand care or I may send this uh, 
this might be a hand carry card. Uh, I'm just using this. You could use any paper you want, but this old paper that I've been holding on to for years. And it uh, seems that I never get through it. Believe it or not, I think it was from Walmart. I bought this from Walmart. So now you can see it folds over and then you can seal it once you get the card in. And uh, just, you just have to be careful and pick the card. Make sure you put your sentiment. It will fit. It's just, if it's a little bulky, it's just getting in there centered. The other thing that I do with, it closes, the other thing I do with box cards, especially ones with embellishments like this, um, a lot of people will put them in, make like little 3D envelopes. Well, I don't think that's necessary. Just as long as you don't put too many 3D elements, you can go ahead and take a regular uh, piece of cardstock, size it, and fold it over to protect the card. But I mean, it's up to you what you want to do. That's why I wanted to give people the option of putting whatever they wanted up here. I decided I wanted to do enamel dots because I thought it would look cute. And um, But you can do whatever you want. So that's it. I hope you enjoy this project. I hope that some people get good use of this. Um, again, I wanted to represent those that had warm weather in the summer. Uh, maybe in the U.S., maybe some places like California and... This kind of screams a little bit more Florida to me, um, and obviously some uh, overseas areas, like I believe Australia. Anyways, that's it. That's the Flamingo Christmas um, box card, and I thank you so much for watching.